The world is a beautiful place, but we're facing some serious environmental problems. One of them you can see on this picture. Perhaps it's easier if I show you the rest of it. To understand the problem, it is often better to see the whole picture. Consequences of human activities are causing problems almost everywhere. And one of these problems that has received a lot of attention the last few years is pollution by plastic packaging. Today, I will tell you how you can contribute to not only avoiding your plastic packaging ending up in nature, but enabling it to be recycled and become raw material for new products. Some believe that the best approach is to ban plastic packaging, period. Now, this would naturally reduce the amount of plastic ending up in nature, and in some cases it might be a good idea, but too often it would only cause other problems that may be even greater. Because the purpose of the packaging is to protect the product and avoid, for instance, food waste. And the global industry is dependent on plastic today, as we currently have no good alternatives with the similar properties, flexibility and light weight. And the packaging, it does help protect the product. I'll give you an example. A few years ago, an experiment was conducted where carrots were left in the fridge for 10 days with and without plastic packaging. As you see from the picture, the carrots with the plastic, they look much more tempting than the ones left outside. And almost always, the packaging has a much lower environmental impact in almost all categories than the product it protects. These graphs show you the CO2 emissions of different types of food, wasted food and packaging. And as you can see, the emissions from the food itself is much higher than the packaging. So a ban on packaging, or on plastic packaging, would result in an increase in food waste and a dramatic increase in global warming emissions. And this is something the world really doesn't need right now. Another approach could be reusable packaging or packaging-free supermarkets. Now, again, for some types of products, this is a very good idea. But too often, it doesn't protect the product or the food well enough or it requires a collection and cleaning system with a higher environmental and economic cost than the single-use alternative. So what you encounter in the supermarkets is normally the single-use packaging, and the only circular approach left to you is material recycling. My name is Johannes, and I would really like to fix the problems related to plastic packaging. I work in a producer responsibility organization, organizing the recycling of packaging in Norway. My job is to help packaging designers develop packaging that is more intuitive for you to dispose of correctly and can be recycled once it's collected. This is an area with a great room for improvement, although many companies are working really hard to fix the problems. But all of their efforts will have a very limited impact unless we manage to get the materials into the recycling system. And I know that some of you may live in countries where there is no good collection and recycling system for plastic. And this is a big problem, and it's difficult for you to do something about today. But most of Europe and many countries outside of Europe have a good system in place. But still, far too little plastic is actually recycled. And the key to fixing this is to get people to do their share. So today, I hope to help you understand why and how you can contribute to fixing the system. But if the advice I give you is different from what your local authorities say, then please follow their advice rather than mine, as the systems can differ a bit. To explain how you can help fix the system, I'll need to explain how this, uh, the life cycle of the packaging works. So first, the packaging is produced and the product is put inside it. The packaging will then protect the product through transportation, in the store, and all the time until you have emptied it. At that stage, the packaging stops being packaging, and it becomes packaging waste. Now, in an ideal world, this is then sent to recycling, it's collected, and it's transported to a sorting facility. Now, the purpose of the sorting facility is to separate different types of plastic and remove other materials. The purpose of this is that to get the plastic pure, because the plastic needs to be very pure to enable high-quality recycling. The sorted plastic is then sent to a recycling facility, where the last impurities are removed, the plastic is recycled, and it's returned back to the market as raw material. 
Now, I promised to tell you how you can contribute, and I'll, I'll get to that now. But in order to do so, I'll go through the life cycle once more. But this time, I'll point out where it doesn't work and what you can do to help fix the system. And the, the first and by far most important thing you can do is just to help bring the plastic into the system. In most places, that means source separating it. It doesn't sound hard, does it? Well, in Oslo, uh, sorry, in Norway, last year, we lost more than half of all the plastic packaging to incineration because it was disposed with the residue waste rather than being separated and sent to recycling. So when you dispose your packaging, if you spend a few moments making sure that it's disposed correctly, you enable it to follow the system and be recycled if this is possible. Sometimes this is very easy and you just follow the instructions on the packaging. Other times these are missing and you need to just sort it as plastic if it seems like it's made of it. And this is the most important thing you can do. But you can do more. As you see, the material that follows the system it's being collected and transported and sent to a recycling, uh, sorting facility. Now, there are people working along this value chain. And I don't know how many of you dream of spending your days handling other people's waste, but I guess at least some of you think, nah, that's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Now, imagine this job. If it consists of handling clean plastic packaging, like you see on the left, or if it consists of handling plastic packaging together with a lot of product residues and food waste, and especially on a nice, warm summer's day when mold and bugs and vermin are thriving and the smell is spreading. But you can make their job a lot nicer if you just empty your packaging before you dispose of it, and perhaps even spend a few moments cleaning it. If you do this, you may encounter a situation where you're uncertain of how clean the packaging actually needs to be before it's ready for, to be sent to recycling. Here you see a packaging, a box, with three different amounts of food left in it. It's a nutty chocolate type of spread. Which one is clean enough? I guess the one to the right is kind of obvious. This is almost entirely clean, and this is perfectly fine for the industry. But what about the one in the middle? Well. If you're, for some able, are unable or unwilling to clean this any further, you can source separate it as it is. But if you give it a wipe with an old napkin or something, it will look like the one on the right, and this is much better. But what about the last box, the one all the way to the left? Well, if your packaging looks like this, and you're, for some reason, are unable or unwilling to empty and clean it further, this should not be source separated. They should go to incineration, but in my opinion, this is more of a food waste problem than a source separation problem, because you really haven't finished your product. So please eat your food, finish your product, and then you will be back to the middle case. From time to time, I'm confronted with the question of how much resources is worth spending on cleaning before the environmental impact is greater than the benefits of recycling. And the exact answer to this will depend on the packaging and the situation and so on, but in general, a quick scrub with cold water or a wipe with an old napkin that's going to be disposed anyways, it is beneficial, and it really helps the system. I'll give you a few examples. Your empty ketchup bottle, fill it with a bit of water, give it a shake and pour it into your next pasta dish. Your empty shampoo bottle, do the same, but use it to wash your hair. I recommend not mixing up those two suggestions. For very fatty products, like an old butter box, Maybe it's better with an old napkin, or leave it in the sink, pour your pasta water into it, quick scrub and a shake, and it's perfect. And if you do this, you're not only going to make life nicer for the people working along the system, but you're also going to help reduce the losses at the sorting and recycling facility. And there is one more thing you can do to help fix the system. You remember I told you that the packaging, the plastic, needs to be very pure to enable high-quality recycling? Well, packaging often consists of different materials, or even different types of plastic. And if you're willing to make a small effort and just remove the different types of material or plastic from each other, where this is easy, then you will help the system even further. Sometimes, again, this just means that you follow the instructions, like tearing off the sleeve from this bottle. 
Other times there are no instructions, but maybe just don't reattach a cork, like the spray cork on this bottle, after you've taken it off to empty out the last remains of soap, then you just don't reattach it. The different parts are often made of different types of plastic, and they should be recycled separately. If the parts are very small, like the cap of a drinking bottle, it might be better to leave it on. And this is partly to reduce the risk of it being lost and ending up in nature, and partly because these very small parts are often sorted away at the sorting facility anyways. And specifically for the cap of a drinking bottle, this will soon need to be attached to the bottle by law in the EU anyways. I told you that last year in Norway, we lost more than half of all the plastic packaging to incineration. Well, in the end of the life cycle, less than one third was actually returned to the market as recycled material. You may think one third, that's low. And I agree, it's depressingly low. But it's actually much better than in many other countries. And the packaging industry and the authorities are many places working really hard to fix the problem. But it won't help much if people don't get better at source separation. And the more plastic we manage to get into the recycling stream, the more will be recycled and returned to the market as raw material, reducing our dependency on virgin plastic, on oil, and it will even help reduce our CO2 emissions. If all the plastic packaging in Norway had been recycled last year, our CO2 emissions nationally would be reduced by more than 200,000 tons of CO2. And Norway is a very small country. We need to start realizing that our waste has a value if it's being treated the right way. And there is a shift in attitudes towards this. In Oslo, where I live, the waste trucks are even labeled value transport. If we get better at source separating our plastic and empty it, and maybe even clean it and separate the different parts, we can fix the system together. Source separation is a small effort by you, but a giant leap towards a circular plastic economy. Thank you. <laughs>